All right, Steve, it was so time back in April where you and I did a podcast together, mm -hmm. which is what we aspire to do. That's why I left the 50,000 watt radio station, John, to podcast. Moving on up. Um, one of the things we talked about was Jim Trestle and Ohio State and the impending fallout. And I think I recall you making a prediction that you thought Trestle was 80% uh, uh, unlikely mm -hmm. to ever coach another football game at Ohio State. And that's what we have is Jim Trestle on Memorial Day uh, resigned resigned from Ohio State. Uh, I guess maybe Ohio State, you know, one, one foot mark on the back as Trestle went out the door. Mm -hmm. Obviously a huge story in finality when he resigns. Not a surprise, but when you hear of a man who had a 83% winning percentage uh, as the head coach at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's third all-time in career wins at Ohio State. One of the winningest coaches in Big Ten history in an 85 scholarship era, no less. And the guy resigns. That's a big deal. It's a big story. And it means big things for the Big Ten, uh, not just down the road, but I also think uh, in 2011, and we'll talk about that a little bit down the line, but your reaction when you heard of Trestle's resignation? Well, when you look at his resume as a whole, but if you look at the last six years, John, his last six years at Ohio State, he might have, the, he might have accomplished the most impressive run of any Big Ten coach in the modern era, which would be after World War II. I think that a case for that could be made when you look at what he's done the last six years on the field. But clearly, there was more there than meets the eye. 43 and 5, I think, in Big Ten play. Yes, and you look at the BCS Bowls and everything else they've accomplished. Every year since you know, had 2005. A Heisman, had a Heisman Trophy winner. I mean, this has been... National Championship. Yeah, this has been an insane uh, run that he has been on. And, and really, it just comes down to um, two things. One, his accomplishments on the field. But two, and what will be the lasting legacy is going to be what happened off of it. Mm -hmm. And he's going to go down. When this is all said and done, I believe he will be the most scandal-ridden football coach uh, that the Big Ten has ever had. I was trying to, you know, that's an interesting point. I was writing some things last night on HawkeyeNation.com, and I stopped myself. In my lifetime, I, I couldn't think of mm -hmm. any football program yes. that is likely going to have the scandal associated with it, that Ohio State is probably going to have from this. We don't know yet, but, uh, you know, I think some trouble's coming. I can't think of anything in history. Neither, neither can I. I. I can't either. I think if, if we were to look at this, let's just be fair, because you and I are both Big Ten guys. Let's be fair about this. We have made more than enough cracks at the SEC over the years. One of my lines is you can't spill cash without SEC. But if this was a coach in the SEC at LSU, Alabama, Auburn, name the school, and he'd been there for 10 or 12 years, and the three best players that he had over that time span had all been cited for major NCAA rules violations. What would we say about that coach if he was in the SEC? Dirty John? coach. Dirty coach. Just another Nick Saban. Well, I potentially just described Jim Tressel based on Maurice Corrette, Troy Smith, and now the pending investigation of Terrell Pryor. And by the way, I don't think Terrell Pryor is ever going to play another down of college football either. Because I can't think of a player who's been investigated for anything like this that didn't lose at least half no of this season. And he's, well, already he's, already, lost half. he's already lost half the season, which means if they suspend him another half of the season, he's over. So I don't think Terrell Pryor is ever playing another down for Ohio State either, and he may not be alone, by the way. He's, he's lost half the season mm -hmm. based upon the tattoo gate, yes. trading services, uh, you know, for you know, trading gear, whatever, his name for you know, free goods and services. You can't do that as a college athlete. Mm -hmm. The NCAA has opened up a separate inquiry Related to his, let's just say, uh, he, the guy likes cars. The guy, before he even signed with the school, had automobile issues. We'll never forget, and I know you as a Michigan fan, yes, we we'll saw those forget pictures. the Corvette yeah. before he signed it. It was Michigan and Ohio State yeah. that Terrell Pryor was down to. And you're wearing the Block M right now, and I mentioned this to you a couple days ago. Uh, a Garth Brooks song went, went, once went. Thank God for unanswered prayers. Yeah, I've read reports that he's had six different cars since he's been at Ohio State. Another report I read says he's had eight. The car he has now has temporary tags. only go back a Literally, few weeks. Literally, that's his mom. It's a Nissan 300, whatever, yeah. 370. He's driving around on a suspended, suspended license. Suspended license. He shows up. He shows up at the announcement that his coach is stepping aside, driving this car. It's like some type I of blue mean, chips. It, 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 it is. It's shameless. That's another Garth Brooks song. It's absolutely just shameless. It's rubbing the NCAA's nose in it. Hey, Mike Garrett, former AD at USC, after hiring Lane Kiffin, while they were on probation, called and said, you probably don't want to do that. You know, if you're, if you're Terrell Pryor, when you're showing up 
to see that your coach is losing his job and you had a role in it? Dude, you better be driving up in a Model T yeah, Ford an in a Chevette, a, a, a Pinto. Absolutely, man. You better be driving my hoopty to practice. No doubt. Okay, not a car with temporary tags on a suspended license. Now, I think this thing is going to get worse before it gets better, John. And I think the barometer here is what happens to Gene Smith. And, and here's why. The athletic director. The athletic Ohio director State. at Ohio State, who we know very well here in Iowa, used to be the athletic director at Iowa State. And, and one thing we can all say about those of us who covered Gene in those days, we can say a few things. Wickedly smart, very likable, very articulate, uh, self-promoter, knows the political game. You got no problem with self-promoters. Okay, and neither do I. In, in, in fact, uh, you know, sometimes they have a spot very close to my heart. SteveDace.com. Thank you. HawkeyeNation.com. But, but, but the point I'm making is, he's not going down quietly. He climbed the social ladder in the NCAA. This for, thing's bigger than Nino Brown? That's, right, that's for 15 years to get where he's at. And if you look at his resume, he's been on the NCAA Management Council. I think that's the highest committee the NCAA has. He's been on the NCAA Committee of Infractions. Hmm. He is now the selection committee chairman for the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Short of being the president of the NCAA, John. <clears throat> Excuse me, those are That's probably... That's impressive, if not more impressive, resume than Bob Bowlesby. I was just going to say, Bob Bowlesby called and said, those are about the three best appointments <laughs> you can get, other than being the chairman of the NCAA right, itself. Right. So, I mean, this guy obviously knows how to swim in the murky waters of politics. He's not going to go without a fight. And if you think the black AD, and there's not too many of those in a sport... In, a college, in collegiate sports, that are most of the best players are black. And, of course, they're underrepresented amongst the coaching and, and administrative fraternity. So if you think a black AD who knows how to play politics is going to go quietly while the white school president says, I hope the coach just doesn't dismiss me, stays, nuh-uh. So you're, you're That's dealing never going to happen. You're dealing the race card out here. I'm just saying we're talking about a college campus in America, particularly one north of the Mason-Dixon line. Race is a major thing. It's almost impossible on a college campus in America, particularly those of north of the Mason-Dixon line, to get rid of a minority or someone that likes having sex with somebody of the same gender unless you actually have videotaped evidence of them breaking the law. That's just political correctness, John. That's just the way it works. That's the reality. That's not a, that's not a judgment. It's an observation. It is the truth. He will not go quietly. So if, the, if he goes, now you're looking at the school president going with him. Right. And if that were to happen, now you're looking at an entire overhaul. So this, all this talk, well, Urban Meyer just takes over in a year. First of all, they're not going to know a year from now what the final, what the final sanctions are even going to be. I John. think the earliest yes. would be a year from they're, right they're, now. I, I bet you a year from now they won't even know what they are, number one. Number two, if the AD goes and the president goes, you're not getting any kind of an AD without knowing who the school president is. And you're not getting any kind of a coach, especially one named Urban Meyer, without knowing who the AD is. Urban Meyer's only 46 years old. He can sit out three, no four years, let this whole thing play out, let, let Luke Fickle and Gene Smith sit there and bite no the doubt. bullet, get watch USC-like scholarship reductions, and, and I think that's the baseline of what we're looking the, at here. The USC penalty, the baseline? That's the baseline. A bull ban, loss of scholarships, yes. allowing upperclassmen to transfer out of the school without yes. facing penalties. So that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the baseline. Low level. I think that's the best-case scenario for Ohio State. Uh, I think... Maybe they don't get quite as many scholarships, maybe a few more. I think the NCAA uh, punitively punished on scholarships because USC went out there and hired Lane Kiffin, who violated 29 NCAA rules his first year at Tennessee. But, it, but they're going to get a bull ban. More than one year would be my guess. Uh, there will be severe scholarship reductions. may not be 30, might be 25. Wouldn't surprise me if it was more. But the range of what happened to USC, I believe that's the baseline. Because what we're talking about here with Ohio State is you're talking about a compliance department that has seven full-time employees who didn't do their job. And in their last job review, all of them got exemplary reviews from that the athletic director. Somebody hires. That's the exactly right. That's a lack, and say it with me now, lack of institutional control. And then you have the coach lying to the NCAA. No, what happened to USC here is the baseline. And I think things are going to get worse before they get better. And I could still foresee a scenario where Urban Meyer is an Ohio native, goes back home and coaches at Ohio State. But I don't think it's Not happened in the next 16 yeah. months. I think more than likely what will happen is they'll just sit there. He'll let, he can wait four years. He's only 50. He's only 50 in four years. Let the sanctions take hold. He takes over for Luke Fickle or whoever else is the sacrificial lamb. Yep, he's the white knight. But if you think he's going to take over the situation Lane Kiffin took over at USC, Lane Kiffin had to take over that 
position, position at USC because there was a posse gathered around no Knoxville, doubt. Tennessee, no waiting doubt. to chase him out. Sports talker, uh, sports talk provocateur Skip Bayless said that this is potentially the most egregious instance of impropriety hmm. since the SMU death penalty, where Southern Methodist football program was canceled for two years in 1987. In 1988, they're still digging out of that. Yes. I mean, June Jones, uh, they, they've done some decent things, but they haven't had any consistency. I don't think we're ever going to see the death penalty again, but this is a big-time deal.